Hello and welcome to week eight of Friday Football Fever. I'm Jeff Jones and this week's high school football schedule was packed with intriguing matchups, including our game of the week, a private school battle between Hyde Park and Regents. Now these programs have very different recent histories, but they enter tonight with very identical 6-0 records. Regents has been at the state championship game in five of the last six seasons. Hyde Park, on the other hand, has gone winless in two of the past three years. The Panthers have a brand new head coach with decades of NFL playing experience. They hope to be the next private school dynasty in our area. But when it comes to private schools, to be the best, you have to beat Regents. It's not a surprise because we've been putting in a lot of hard work. I knew we would be better. <laughs> when I heard they had 72 kids come out or something like that, I knew they were in good shape. I knew they'd be coached well. I know both of the coordinators pretty well. When Coach Phil came to Hyde Park, we we were all bought in. We've asked them to do completely new things, hard things, and pay the price. Last year, we wouldn't we wouldn't get a lot of respect from anyone. In the last couple years, you haven't really looked at it much. The remarks would be like, like how much are y'all gonna lose by now? And this year, it's more of how much are y'all gonna win by? We're now back to that point where we got two undefeated teams coming into this game. So yeah, it's a big game. Sorry. It's the Game of the Week, sponsored by Urology Austin. Hyde Park had eyes on a huge upset, but on this play, everyone else had eyes on Jackson Smith. The region senior got hit so hard that he spun around in midair and his helmet popped up a bit. So he just fixed his face mask mid-play and kept on going. That's a 48-yard punt return touchdown. Later in the first half, Bobby Long, the sophomore who clearly has a future play in this game, got both feet down in the corner of the end zone. And it wasn't just the offense. The defense for Regents made plays too. Whit Powell is committed to play his college football at Colorado State. He got the strip sack right there. Looked like a big-time D1 athlete. The Knights stay perfect final score in this one, 42 nothing now that you guys have seen the highlights and you know the final score well you know part of the story but my friend Corey Mose was on the sideline for this game and got to talk with a few of the Knights players afterwards and he's ready to share the full story with you hey Corey what's going on Jeff yeah you're right we had this tremendous battle going on between High Park and then Regents but at the end of the first quarter we all thought man we got a private school classic on our hands it was zero to zero but then the second quarter happened and then Regents just took over. I was able to talk to safety Will Pope after the game and he mentioned how he felt like as a team that punt return for a touchdown sparked the momentum on the way to a 42 to nothing victory lead led by freshman phenom Quinn Murphy. The 15 year old did his thing. He was poised in the pocket and I was able to talk to him after the game. Y'all dropped 42 points tonight. Everything just seems smooth like butter on offense. How is that possible? You know, coming into this week, we know it was going to be a huge game, and our offensive coaches prepared us so well. We knew that they were going to be blitzing a ton. We put in a bunch of packages, and the O-line stepped up and played great. And your coach mentioned it. This is your first rivalry game against Hyde Park. And, folks, um, he's only 15. So how are you all able, and how are you able to be so poised, even though you're only a freshman? Just to, like, put all my trust in my teammates. I know that every dude on there has got my back, especially the O-line. Just if I trust them, we'll get the job done, and that's what we did tonight. And when you had two big strip sacks tonight, great job on defense. Your defensive coordinator even said y'all played at a level that he didn't expect. So how were y'all able to shut them out? Well, I really think it was just, it was thanks to our defensive scheme our coaches made. I mean, really, we just completely changed it up, brought three down front, and decided to trust our secondary, and they did amazing. And then I don't even know if they had positive yards rushing. So just overall, I think the entire defense worked well as a team. Yeah, y'all dominated tonight. And Coach Lashley, talking to you earlier this week, you said as, as long as y'all limit the mistakes, y'all will be good. Y'all not only did that, but y'all dominated. How would you assess your team's performance tonight? Yeah, I think that um, we did exactly that. We, we didn't really struggle in the first quarter. We kind of had to feel through it a little bit. I thought our offense didn't make a mistake, even though we had a couple chances. And then our defense, was, the defense and special teams were dominant. That's what we needed. Well, guys, congratulations on a robbery win. Good luck next week, and great job, man. <laughs> Yeah, they were able to just continue their dominance in the private school level, and now they moved to 7-0 on the season. And this was actually their third shutout of the season, so this defense is legit, and I can't wait to see what the rest of the season holds for the Knights. Jeff? Was that a quarterback wearing eye black? Don't mess with that guy. Corey, hey. thanks for that. Go ahead and tell me. <laughs> 
Thanks for that report, man. You be safe on the ride back. Hey, our game of the week was an undefeated private school matchup, but up in 6A, we saw an undefeated matchup between two of the biggest and best teams in town. Westlake put its 46 game win streak on the line against 6 and 0 Dripping Springs. These have been two of the most dominant teams in town this season. The average margin of victory for Westlake, 41 points. The average for Dripping, 42 points, but something told me tonight would not be that lopsided. It was just a six point game right before halftime, but Dripping Springs blocked a punt so that margin of error would stay razor thin into the second half. Third quarter down by two scores, Austin Novosad found Boston Pat for a touchdown to once again make it a six point game. And now here's the play that broke this one wide open. Westlake quarterback Paxton Land said, Land, see, ground, air, whatever's needed, I can deliver. He sprinted in for a 22 yard score. That made it a 12 point game with about five minutes left. Westlake went on to win this one 29 to 10. To the scoreboard for the first time tonight, Vista Ridge picks up a very important win. They're fighting to hang on to that fourth playoff spot in their district. The Rangers beat Stony Point 39 to 27. And Westwood, after dropping three straight, the Warriors are back in the win column. They beat McNeil 17 to 15. More scores for you. San Marcos couldn't quite hang with one of the best teams from the San Antonio area. The Rattlers fall to Cibolo Steel 49 to 14. And New Braunfels Canyon. Well, that score looks identical, and it's, again, a team from down south, closer to San Antonio on top of our guy, the Lehman Lobos. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to hang with New Braunfels Canyon. They trail 49-14 in the fourth. Hey, another huge game tonight. Undefeated round rock in 5-1 Vandergriff. Now already up 14-6, the Vipers went to their number one receiver, the guy wearing number one, Miles Coleman. Now this play is just called get it to Miles and watch him run. Round Rock though, they have a few good receivers as well. Aiden Sterling came down with a nice catch after, boom, getting popped right there in the middle of the field. That set up Adam Borrell for an Adam Scorell. They say all good things must come to an end. Does that include Round Rock's undefeated season? Oh, score is up, and yes, it does include that undefeated season. Vanderwerf wins this one by eight, final score 30 to 22. A couple of neighbors, Georgetown and Eastview, played each other this evening. The Eagles with a giant sign and some pretty giant trash talk. Now, the thing about talking trash is you have to back it up. They did. Eagles running back Andrew Petter put Georgetown up by seven. Then Drayden Dickman, a guy with college offers from Rice, Columbia and Dartmouth, said when in doubt, just go to the smart guy. That's a good life lesson right there. The Eagles were handing out touchdowns like free chips and salsa, and apparently Andrew likes to double dip. This was his second score of the day. Usually I'm against double dipping, but it's OK. You get a pass tonight. This one got out of hand early. The Eagles win 59. To 19. Back to the scoreboard. Elgin, one point win over Waco University. I really like what the Wildcats have been doing this season, and that good fortune continues for them. Connolly, not able to get a win tonight. Belton leaves town with a W. Final score in that one 43 to 21. Time to check in on some District 12 5A, 5A scores on the D2 side. Crockett, big win over Travis, won by 50. 56 to 6, the final score there. McCallum, the Knights get another W. It looks like they're in the fourth quarter still, but that one's in hand. 41 to 7, they lead Lassa. We have plenty more highlights that might get you up and dancing on your feet. Don't go anywhere. Friday football fever returns in less than two minutes. Friday Football Fever, big save of the week, sponsored by Austin Telco Federal Credit Union. We build true financial futures. Welcome back to Friday Football Fever. And guys, it is time to bring in my friend Tyler Feldman. And you know, guys, for some high school programs in town, it is not too early to start taking a look ahead and seriously thinking about what it takes to make it into the playoffs. And that is the case in District 25-6A, where it looked like there were three big dogs in that district. I'm talking about Vandergriff, Round Rock, and Maynard. But there are four playoff spots. And Jeff, naturally those big dogs, mm -hmm. they've got to eat. But the question is, is there enough room and enough food for that fourth and final team? You've got Vista Ridge who enter the day on the inside track, but you've also got Cedar Ridge. Yeah, the Raiders, they've still got a shot if the Rangers slip up or if those Raiders can pull off an upset okay. uh, starting tonight against Maynard. Okay, well, Vista Ridge got the win, so we'll see if the upset was in store. Maynard hosting and DJ Shaw with a play so nice we had to slow it down for you. Mm. The Mustang senior came down with his second pick of the season. The Maynard defense looks sharp. The special teams, not so special. This was the second time that the snap and the punter, they just didn't get along. 
That miscue put Adam Patterson in position to score. The upset that we said they needed is exactly what they got. Cedar Ridge didn't just win, they blanked them. 22 Whoa. to 0, the final score on that one. Did not see that coming after starting the season 0-2. Lake Travis is heating up. Yeah, the Cavs, they've won three of their last four. Looking to make it four of five with another district win over Anderson. But the Trojans, they show that Trojan fight here in the first half. Fred Dale hooking up with Cole Canada, far side for the touchdown. Trojans actually go into halftime tied at 21 with Lake Travis. But the Cavs end up blowing things up big time in the second half. 45-21, you're fine. Wow. Hey, to the scoreboard again, a couple of 4A matchups. Somerset gets a win over Fredericksburg. Those Billies fall 21 to 10. And Giddings and Smithfield take the field against each other. The Tigers, 20-point win, 27 to 7, the final score in that one. Some more scores coming your way. Wimberley doing what Wimberley has done this season. That's win and win big. They beat Maynard New Tech 63 to 0. And LaGrange, another win for them. 44 to 10, the W over Caldwell. Back to the highlights district showdown over at Gupton Stadium. Two one and five teams looking to snap losing streak. Cedar Park two straight. Hendrickson three straight second quarter. Aiden Arp on third and seven. What a pass. What a catch. Gavin Choppa first down T Wolves. They can't punch it in though. Mm. Got to credit the Hawks defense there. Cedar Park can't convert the field goal. Hate to see that. So we head into halftime scoreless. In the end, it's Cedar Park who comes out on top 24 to seven. All day, every day. 24-7. <laughs> Hayes hosted the game 5-1 versus 5-1. Both teams are known for scoring a lot, but it was the defenses that showed up early. A missed exchange for the Hawks gave the ball back to Seguin, but moments later when Hayes was back on O, Tyler McInvale to Kyrie Patton, the running back, got things pointed in the right direction. Hayes took a six-point lead into the break. Seguin wins this one 41-34. to Pointed in the right direction. <laughs> Liberty Hill stays hot. Five straight wins now for the Panthers. 35-14 over Lockhart. Cedar Creek, meanwhile, remains winless. The mm. Eagles, they fall to San Antonio Piper, 49-14. More boards. Taylor suffers a third consecutive loss. Lampasas continues to own the Ducks. The Badgers, they've now won six straight in the series, 42-13 tonight. Four straight losses for the Marble Falls Mustangs. They get dropped by the Burnett Bulldogs, 28-14. Hutto made the trip up north to play Temple. The, the Hippos punt returner got hit hard on this play, which sent the ball flying. Temple hopped on it, so they took the ball over in Hutto territory, and it didn't take long for the Wildcats to find the end zone. This touchdown came with about 20 seconds left in the half. It's a close one. Temple currently leads in the fourth. Let's see that score. Oh, it's a four-point lead. Yeah, 31-27. Hippos maybe going to make a comeback in this one. We'll see. The Weiss Wolves snapped a two-game losing skin with the win last week over Copperas Cove. Looking to start a new winning streak tonight. If Brian Vikings get on the board first, first, thanks to Terrence Lewis. House call right there. Wolves answer right back, though. Tate Ryland drops back, looks right, but he wants the deep ball left, and there's Torrey Simmons left open. Touchdown Weiss, we're tied at seven. Brian does go back up six, but that lead does not last very long. Dalen Alexander, Alexander the Great, direct snap right into the end zone. That puts Weiss back up 14-13. The Wolves go on to pick up their second straight win, 38-13. Back to the scoreboard, Lago wow. Vista. Holy moly. 70 to nothing, the Polar Bears in some hot water there. Geronimo Navarro, meanwhile, gets the win over Gerald, 48 to 31. More boards. Lowley beats San Antonio Colt, 38-19, and the Lano Yellow Jackets, mm -hmm. proving they are possibly the best 3A team in District 13. Probably, I think, definitely. They're now 7-0 winners, 35-7 over Marion. All right. Hey, each and every week this season, we're going to showcase one local group as our Friday Football Fever Band of the Week. And this week, that honor goes to the guys from Buda Johnson. Let's take a listen. Welcome back, and we're starting this segment with a stat that's so outrageous, I need to say it twice. Yeah, I'm ready. I hope you are, too. <laughs> Since opening district play, the LBJ Jaguars have averaged about 79 points per game. 79. 
said it twice for you. That'd be impressive for a high school basketball team, Tyler, let alone a football squad. Yeah, Jeff, how about the Jags getting it done big time on offense? And that's because they've got not just one, but two Division I running backs, another pair of D1 recruits at receiver in the very same offensive playbook that led them to that state championship game just a season ago. Jags looking to remain unbeaten in district play against Navarro. Fourth down and 10, 20. Ollie Scott float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. 30 yard touchdown pass to Latravion McCutcheon. LBJ just dancing its way through this one later. Cedric Alexander, the future Vandy Commodore, opens the door. Actually, no one was in his way. 25 yard house call. Jags just getting started later. Gary and Hawthorne dials up another thorn. The Vikings secondary, Jaquan McGee. Woo wee. Beautiful 22 yard touchdown. Jags win their third straight. 70 to nothing. Give me another woo wee. Woo wee. Here it is. <laughs> well, hey, all the guys in Johnson City usually give us a booyah. That's their battle cry. Didn't hear booyah enough tonight. Mason Punchers went ahead and beat Johnson City after losing to JC last year. Final score in that one, 29 to 17. On the bottom of the screen, Florence failed to find the end zone or field goal in this one. Rogers wins 44-0. More scores coming your way. The Lexington Eagles got a W tonight, 36 to 6. That final score is what I'm seeing. There we go at the top of the screen. And St. Michael's, oh, one point short for the Second week in a row, actually, they lost by one point last week to Hyde Park. They fall by, by one to St. Joseph's, 29 to 28. Bible Stadium, Leander Lions, after starting the season 3-0, they're now seeing red. Look at the eye, losers of three straight. On the other side, it's the a &M Consolidated Tigers, winners of three straight. So here we go, first drive of the game. Will Hargett gets the ball into the hands of Wesley Greaves, and Greaves, he's gone. 41 yards down near sideline. It is seven nothing Tigers ensuing drive for the Lions. Logan Mitchell scrambling, keeping it himself. A little pump fake gets taken down. Drive stalls. Tigers take over. Keyshawn Thomas. Choo choo. Thomas the train. 13 yard ah. touchdown. Just had to fill you in there, Jeff. Yeah, 14 nothing Tigers as the Lions losing streak. Look at that little guy extends to four final 39 to 15. Hey, Jeff, mm -hmm. I'll send us to break. We'll be right back with our advocates. Athlete of the week. Choo -choo. It's the athlete of the week sponsored by Apicus plumbing, air conditioning and electrical. My name is Corey Mose. I work for KVU, the ABC station out here, and I'm actually here to present the Abacus Athlete of the Week, and it's going to be Noah Fleming. Yeah! I got a plaque for you. There you go. You've been voted captain on this squad, man, and, and you, you're a leader on this team. How would you describe your leading style? Uh, I'm more of a lead by example type of person. I don't say too much, but I know when it comes to working hard and stuff, I'm going to do what I can. And hopefully, the rest of the team can do what I do and do it better. I think he's just a natural, quiet leader. Even at home, he just leads by example, and they just see what their big brother does, and they kind of follow suit. It's kind of like you see what I can do, then you can do this as well, and you may even be able to do it better. And then you also attend Bethany Baptist Church. Why is it so important to have that kind of spiritual side to your everyday life? God is good. Help, help me through too much. So yeah, that's all I got to say. God is good. God is good all the time. You know, that's what they always say in those Baptist churches, man. And so I uh, also heard that you're in the choir at the Baptist Church. You know what I'm going to ask you next, right? Can I can I hear a little something, something? <laughs> I think he has a very good baritone voice, so I would always tell him, if football doesn't pan out, think about majoring in music. <laughs> Guys, can I get one more? Let's go! KVU Friday Football Fever Athlete of the Week is sponsored by Abacus Plumbing, Air Conditioning, and Electrical. It's the Big Save of the Week, sponsored by Austin Telco. Three of the best players of the week. Let's start with blue receiver Nehemiah Smith-Livingston, who played on Thursday, and in addition to Thursday night lights, we saw some Thursday night jets. Nehemiah broke four tackles and was gone. He helped Bowie win an important game. 
Tonight, LBJ Navarro, tasty pass, tasty catch. Courtesy of the <laughs> LBJ offense, Gary and Hawthorne, Jaquan McGee, beautiful 22-yard touchdown. First time the Jags score 70 or more points in a game since last week when they put up 89. Last up, private school guys putting on a show, Regents 48-yard punt return. You can vote on your favorite play on my Twitter page, at Jeff Jones Sports. We'll see you back here next week.